hint of an ego problem creeping in here. Might you say that you had just the slightest touch of a messiah complex? Well, would I have a haircut like this if I didn't? I think we're all entitled to a little messiah complex of our own, as long as it doesn't involve taking up arms or sort of going around and crucifying anybody else. So, who in this vast world of ours is this doing the slightest bit of good for? Could it be you, perhaps? It's good for me, obviously. And hopefully it's maybe good for the people who read it. Yeah, we get letters from sort of kids. These are not sort of wild-eyed Manson converts, but they're kids who may have read something that I've written and decide that, uh, yeah, perhaps they have changed their mind about this facet or that facet. We get a lot of kids writing in to disagree, and that's healthy as well, as long as they're thinking. I don't want everybody to agree with me. I just want people to think. <laughs> What I'm trying to do is to take some possibly unpopular political beliefs and to make them accessible. To give ideas that are quite large and complex to children in a form that they can understand. I would much rather put out my stories to children, to people who do not share my political beliefs at all, because in that instance I am not preaching to the converted. Given that I've got, say, half a million readers a month, if only 10% of those, or 1% of those, take notice of what I'm saying, that is still a very large number of people. Everyone thinks they're such sweet little things. Ducks, ducks, quack, 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 quack. Soft downy feathers and nice little wings. Ducks, ducks, quack, quack. But there's a poison I'd like to administer You think they're cuddly, but I think they're sinister Ducks, ducks, quack, 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 quack Dressed in flat jackets and horrible shoes Getting divorces and turning to booze Ducks, ducks, quack, 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 quack Look closer and you may recoil in surprise At web-footed fascists with mad little eyes Come on, what's this business with ducks? Isn't that a little bit psychotic? What the hell have you got against ducks? What have I got against ducks? Well, that was perhaps just a, a passing phase in my youth. It's like when you get Tory MPs asked why they were members of the National Front until two weeks ago last Tuesday. I have to put it down to a, an indiscretion of my younger days, basically. But uh, they are pretty vile when you think about it, aren't they? With those nasty little squinty eyes waddling around. and Well, th there's something a bit disturbing, a little bit mad about ducks. You only have to look at them up close to know that they're up to no good. I have to think, what do your parents think about all this? Do they think, my God, what have we reared? I mean, do they look on you as a success or are you a crushing disappointment to them? Um, it must be terribly difficult being uh, my parents, I should imagine, because I'm as much of a surprise to them as I am to myself. I mean, the area that I came from doesn't habitually produce people like me. My parents never argued, ever, which is certainly abnormal. I was not discouraged in the use of my imagination as a child. I had a pretty rich fantasy life. In every school that I've been in, there have always been, without exception, three or four other people who were better than me at writing, better than me at drawing, and all these other skills, who are now working in shoe factories, who are working down mines, and who are completely buried in industrial reality and will never, ever see the light of day. I really have no time for this big mystique of art. I think that's a lie. I think that a lot of artists will try to pretend that they exist in some state of cosmic crushing misery that the rest of the human race cannot possibly appreciate. And that is just simply bullshit. Art is the same as being a car mechanic. It is just purely a matter of application. There is nothing mystical about it at all. You draw every day, or you write every day. You become very aware of your own mistakes. 
you become brutal with yourself over your own mistakes. If there's something in there you don't like, you excise it immediately. Howard Jones was done partially as a response to the locker room atmosphere of misogyny in boys' comics, where the only purpose for a woman is that she should get tied up, should scream a lot, and should be somebody for the heroes to rescue. What I wanted to try and do was to take a totally unexceptional character, somebody who could just be the girl next door, and just show the sort of triumphs ordinary people have. They might be small compared to the doings of a Superman or a James Bond or a, a Flash Gordon, but they're infinitely more important. If I could do something which actually stressed the importance and heroism and goodness of ordinary people, then I thought I might have accomplished something. The Aaron Quinn are probably the comic strip that I shall ask to have eradicated and destroyed upon my deathbed. What they are in Quinchar is a continuation of the great British comic tradition of making heroes out of juvenile delinquents. If you imagine Dennis the Menace with a thermonuclear capacity, you're probably pretty close to the idea of D.R. and Quinch. Maybe it's a sign of the times, I don't know, but certainly in this country they're probably the most popular creations that I've come up with. You know, I think a lot of people identify with these two ugly, acne-ridden, alienated individuals who find no greater fun in life than going around and bombing expensive foreign restaurants. Even though the characters in comics are perhaps a lot stranger than those in other forms of literature or entertainment, you still have to get inside them in the same way. If you're a writer, you still have to try and work out how they feel, how they think, how they stand. Uh, I remember one character that was a good example of this was a medieval demon from the depths of hell that I had to introduce into an episode of Swamp Thing. And uh, basically, I mean, this was a sort of character that... Uh, did need some work to actually try and work out how he would act. So I sat myself down in front of a mirror and I closed the blinds so that the neighbours didn't see or become suspicious and phone the police or anything and then would start to actually try and change the physical way that I felt, try to imagine that I was shorter, squatter, heavier, weighing a couple of tons and that because of the fangs that this demon character had that my upper lip was pushed forward which would distort the way I spoke, it would give me a speech impediment, something like Charles Lawton or somebody like that. So once I was in position and sort of thought my way into the part as best I could, I'd have to go something like this, you know. The toys about the nursery are set for idiot chaos to arrange at whim. As he disorders lives, he draws, chin wet and old or young. It matters not to him. I am but he who comes to cage the ape, I pay no heed. To youth or purity. I'll roast each churl that aids the beasts escape and drink their health tonight in purgatory. I started off doing poetry. I've had the same sort of flirtations with the idea of being a rock musician that probably most people growing up in my generation did, in that we've all stood in front of the bathroom mirror with a tennis racket and mimed to the, the latest Led Zeppelin hit or whatever. Hey! Come on, let's pass out that Jack Daniels and we'll talk about old murders. Yeah, and double crosses, and dead blondes. And we'll say, here's looking at ya. Here's blood in your eye. Old ghosts sit in the back room. Bodies don't tell stories. Old dreams wear dusty clothing. Old gangsters 